This channel passed the 1,000 subscriber mark a while back and to celebrate, you are about to witness some wild Q&A action. Let's start. On my upper body day, I do 4 sets of 8 dumbbell rows and 4 sets of dumbbell bench press. How could I fit chin-ups in there? I do other stuff but those two are the ones I go really heavy on. Should I do them at the end after bench press? Do them together with bench presses in a superset fashion. So one set of chin-ups, rest, one set of dumbbell bench, rest, go back to chin-ups and so on. Perform the dumbbell rows after because they are an assistance movement. You want your lats and upper back fresh for maximal chin-up performance. So that's why you want to do them early in your workout before rows. Would you program conventional deadlifts in season? If I'm dealing with a high level athlete, D1 or Pro, I would not. Conventional is the least forgiving deadlift variation in terms of technique and fatigue. What I mean by that is unless your form is spot on, all it takes is one bad rep to run into back problems. Very few high level hockey players have good technique when the weights get heavy. So I would not risk it, especially during the season. I would much rather do trap bar deadlifts. If you play hockey as a hobby, it's different. We don't have potentially millions of dollars on the line. If your technique is good, go ahead. For people with bad ankles, hips and backs, would you suggest leg press? That's the wrong question. The right question is why do I have bad ankles, bad hips, a bad back? Maybe you were born with it, maybe you were in a car crash, I don't know. But those are exceptions. The vast majority of injuries are self-inflicted. By that I mean it's a result of physical inactivity, too much physical activity, bad lifting technique in the gym, a huge one lopsided training where you overstress one part or area of your body while neglecting another part or any combination of those. What I'm getting at is if you look at your training with a critical eye, you will find a reason why your body hurts. And we want to fix the root cause of your pain. Skipping squats for leg presses does not solve anything. All it does is you might be able to train your quads today, but you will still have that bad ankle, bad hip, bad back when you wake up tomorrow. If you want to get rid of the pain and move better, you will have to start squatting. First with body weight. Work on your mobility, raise the heels so it's easier to drop into the hole, calf to hamstring and over time when your form improves and you can do it without pain, start to load it up. In the meantime, while you're working on improving your squat mobility, use single leg exercises like split squats, Bulgarian split squats, lunges to train your legs. This is how you rehab your body. You gain your mobility back, you move better, you feel better and when you do it long enough, consistently enough, you will no longer have a bad back or bad hips. You will be healthy again. But the solution is movement and gradual overloading over a full pain-free range of motion, not the leg press machine. Can I take creatine as a distance runner? You can although you likely won't notice much of a difference in your endurance. The benefits of creatine show up in short bouts of maximal effort and it also helps you gain small amounts of muscle mass and strength. Unless those are your goals as a runner, it won't do much for your performance. There's no harm in taking creatine, just know that it's not going to magically shave minutes off your race time. What do you think about the push-pull leg split? I would also like to know your thoughts on a full body split where you do full body training every time you lift. Thank you. Full body works for athletes. I think it's the best way to train. Upper lower splits are also fine. Push full legs. You see it hyped up all over social media, but look at who is behind the hype. It's guys who are not athletes. They're fitness dudes who train to look good. Nothing wrong with that, but they don't train to compete on the field. So they can go to the gym five, six times a week and not have to worry about speed work, conditioning, sports skills. They just lift. But a hockey player, for example, you're in the gym three or four times per week in the off season, twice during the season, that means you'll be hitting a muscle group or body part only once a week on a push-pull leg split. That's not enough frequency to maximize your strength and muscle gains. Twice a week minimum is needed and you can only hit that twice a week frequency threshold when training in the gym six times per week on push-pull legs. No healthy athlete should be in the gym six times per week lifting. What's an alternative to med ball slams if I'm in a commercial gym? You can replace them with any type of Olympic lift. Could be a power clean or power snatch, a high pull or bench throws in the Smith machine. Wouldn't chin up start your biceps more as the palms are facing towards you but if you turn your palms away from you it would be more of a back workout. Try to do a chin up using any grip without using your back. Impossible. Hand position makes little difference in that regard. Yes a chin up with the palms facing you will target the biceps slightly more but it's not going to transform it from a back exercise into a biceps exercise. Your lats will still be the primary muscle group 
getting trained. Does being on the ice count as cardio? Yes. And how far apart should I spread my weight days and conditioning days? Depends on your schedule. I prefer alternating days. So you lift on Monday, condition on Tuesday, get back in the gym on Wednesday. But that's not always feasible. So you might have to do two a days, in which case lift in the morning and run hills, jump rope, push a sled, do tempo runs in the evening. What is the weekly workout schedule when you train someone like Kasper Bjerkvist? For example, Monday lower, Tuesday upper, Thursday lower, Friday upper. It's a four times per week upper lower split where Mondays and Thursdays are upper body sessions and Tuesdays and Fridays are lower body. Does lifting weights stun your growth as a 12 year old kid? When it's done right, absolutely not. This myth is always parroted by clueless sports coaches and clueless parents who have no idea what they're talking about. I dedicate an entire chapter to this topic in strength training for ice hockey, where I lay out all the research that proves lifting weights is safe for young kids, given that it's done correctly. I'll drop the link for you to check out my book in the description so you can read all the research for yourself. How long should I be resting between exercises? Depends on your strength levels, the exercise and number of reps. A weak athlete doing a set of 10 squats, two minutes, a strong athlete squatting a double between four and five minutes. The stronger you are and the more neurally demanding an exercise is, the longer you have to rest. I have two questions. One, is jumping rope good for hockey conditioning? Two, why doesn't all conditioning exercises transfer to the ice? I didn't see the full value of jumping rope until I started boxing as a hobby. As you know, fighters have been using the jump rope to get in shape forever. There's a reason for that it works. Plus it's really fun once you learn some tricks. So I have started using the jump rope more with my hockey players over the past few years and the guys seem to like it. Why doesn't all conditioning transfer? The best example I can give you is the case of Lance Armstrong, the most accomplished cyclist in history who decided he would run the New York City Marathon. This is a guy who has tremendous conditioning and one of the highest VO2 maxes ever recorded in a male athlete. So you would think because of his exceptional endurance background in cycling, he would crush a marathon. There were experts at the time, and this is about 15 years ago, predicting he had a good shot at placing in the top 10 despite running only his first race. Some even claimed Lance Armstrong could set a new marathon world record, which was about two hours and five minutes at the time. So what happens? Armstrong finishes in two hours, 59 minutes and 36 seconds, nowhere near the top 10, a time hobby runners can beat. That just goes to show that conditioning is mode or activity specific, meaning your exceptional conditioning on a bike doesn't automatically transfer to running. Same with swimmers. They have amazing endurance in the water, but what happens when you make them run long distances, they can't keep up. Which brings us back to ice hockey. The best conditioning for skating is skating because nothing you do off the ice can replicate the uniqueness of that activity. What about SLRDL, meaning single leg Romanian deadlift? It's a decent exercise, but rarely done well. Stability is a big issue here because you're standing on one leg with your non-working leg up in the air. So it gets really hard trying to keep your balance when you go heavier and heavier. For that reason, I don't like single leg RDLs as a strength or muscle building exercise. An exception would be when holding a dumbbell in one hand and using your free hand to grab something sturdy for balance to work around that. But the downside is you can't go really heavy with just one dumbbell on this variation. So again, not a great exercise for strength or size. That said, the key point is this. Anytime you have less stability, you compromise force production, which negatively impacts your strength and muscle building efforts. In my opinion, for the hamstrings, a regular two leg RDL is a better option. Or if you want to do single leg reps, use the lying leg curl station, stability ball leg curls or slider leg curls on one leg. Performance on none of these exercises is limited by your balance, which makes them better choices for me. And with that, we're done. Thank you for watching. I'm planning to make these Q and A's a monthly, maybe even a weekly thing on this channel, but I need your input. Is this the type of content you would like to see more of? If yes, give it a thumbs up. So I'll make more videos where I answer your pressing questions on all things training and nutrition. Also, if you want me to answer your question in my next Q and A, drop it in the comments below. That's all for today. I'll see you in the next video.